Well, good afternoon, people, and we are back. And I hope and pray that the first part of what is a mikvah um, was enlightening. And, and if there's some things and some parts in it that, you know, you still need clarification on, one, I would say go back and reread it and reread it with your scriptures in hand because this is going to continue to build off what we just spoke on in part one. Also, keeping that in mind, now that you have a better concept of a mikvah, I would like us to start in Zechariah chapter 13. We're going to read verse 1. It says, In that day a fountain shall be opened for the house of Daud or David, and for the inhabitants of Jerusalem for sin and for uncleanliness. Already this is start to get your mind where it needs to be when speaking on the mikvah. Because a fountain, what comes out of a fountain? Water. And then you read what the water is for. It's for the uncleanliness of the inhabitants of Jerusalem and for the sin. And this is and this is open for the house of David. We will we know that Yahshua is of was from the house of David because he was a descendant of such. So already Zechariah is prophesying something major. And this is what I'm telling you. For those of us back then who searched the scripture, which we did, it was our life. It was, you know, it was our livelihood. This stuff wasn't so much a mystery as it is today. Let me pose a question to all the listeners right now who believe that a baptism is a one-time event. Or a mikvah, let me see, is a one-time event. Do you think that a shower or a bath is a one-time event? Like a little bath, a little shower. Do you take a shower, the shower to end all showers, and then as you go through life, you will no longer need a shower again? Well, of course not. Why? Because you go through life and you get dirty. You know, even if you're clean, the people you're around may not be clean. You know, the times I got to work in the clubs and stuff like that, I don't smoke. I go in there clean. But when I leave that environment full of uncleanliness, I don't smell like that neither. So you know what I do when I go home? I shower. All right. Even though I had two one prior to, you have to start ditching the mind frame that you have when it comes to these Eastern Hebraic writings. And we have to truly, truly adopt the, their mind frame. You know, the mikvah, like I've said plenty, plenty times before, was a continuous thing. And, and even when you are mikvah in the identification, you are mikvah in the name of Yahshua HaMashiach. And you are mikvah for the remission of sins. Two different mikvahs, but can be done at the same time. Note that you still can mikvah if you feel the need to, if you just want a spiritual cleanse, if you want a physical cleanse, if you are about to go on a fast and you want to cleanse a purity before you do such. These are reasons why one would mikvah and it's still permissible today, but it's this this concept is just not thoroughly understood by even your favorite pastors and deacons and preachers and you know to all our disadvantage because what a blessing it is in psalms 51 i mean i believe it's david who writes this we're just speaking on the the uh fountain that comes from the house of david david writes in verse 2 wash me completely from my guilt and cleanse me from my sin and what do you think David thought the methodology to complete such an act would have been done by? Of course, the mikvah. Which one? If it's coming from the Father, it could be a spiritual mikvah. You know, a mikvah of the Spirit. And, and for those who may not even believe in a spiritual mikvah or a spiritual immersion, you go to the book of Acts, chapter 1. Let's go down to verses 4. This is Yahshua speaking, I believe. It says, In meeting with them, he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which you have heard from me, because John truly immersed in water. But you shall be immersed in the Ruach HaKodesh, or the Holy Spirit, not many days from now. Here it is, plain as day. You can be immersed in the Spirit. And if you keep reading in the book of Acts, I believe, when they were in the upper room during the Feast of Shavuot, they received the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, and had an immersion or a mikvah of the Holy Spirit. And then they were able to speak in tongues, which I'm going to have to do a whole lesson on that one of these days. You know, I had early on in my development ran into a Jew and um, he was a kosher rabbi. One of the things that he presented to me was, hey, you believe in Jesus? I was like, yeah. 
He said, you believe that, um, you know, he, he started the baptism thing, right? I was like, yeah. He said, well, you know, you know, Jesus never baptized anybody. And it's <laughs> on top of him chastising me and, and challenging me to go and prove that this this figure that I believed in was born on December 25th, using the Bible to prove it. I, too, to my embarrassment, knew that I would not have been able to prove that Jesus baptized anybody because I just had never read any instance of him doing so. Had I continued to read, and this is, I was around 15 during this time, right? Had I continued to read, I would have found myself in Matthew chapter 3. John, uh, Yohanan, the immersion says, I immerse you with water for repentance. Again, this is the mikvah of repentance or the mikvah for the remission of sins. That's what those people out there were lining up for when they were dealing with John. But John goes on to say, but after me comes one who is more powerful than I. Whose sandals I'm not worthy to carry. He will baptize you, or mikvah, you with the Holy Spirit and fire. This is why Yahshua never mikvahed anybody in water. You never see him dunking anyone in water. Though you see his apostles doing so, they were commanded to do so. He's coming with a different mikvah. But when trying to explain this phenomenon of the mikvahs and the different kinds of mikvahs by using this one word, baptism, you sum up all of them. And then you introduce a lot of confusion when you really start to read scripture. In the prophet Jeremiah chapter 2 Starting at verse 13, we read, For my people have done two evils. They have forsaken me, the vaulting of living water, to hew out for themselves cisterns, cracked cisterns, which do not hold water. Now, the fountain of living water, again, we're speaking about this mikvah, and the mikvah was always centered around living or running water. And we forsook that. This is in the time of Jeremiah before Yahshua's earthly advent. We were forsaking the living water then and then when Yahshua came, we still found ourselves forsaking the living water, which whom had we drunk of, we would not thirst as our forefathers did. Still in Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 13, we read, For Yahweh, it says, Yahweh, the expectation or the hope of all Yishvael, all those who departed from me shall be written in the earth because they have forsaken Yahweh, the fountain of the living waters. Again, something that we've been doing for a long time, sadly. In Revelations chapter 20, we read in verses 6, it says, And he said to me, It is done. I am the Aleph and the Tau, the beginning and the end that is. To the one who thirsts, I shall give of the fountain of the water of life without payment. In Titus 3, 5, we read, He delivered us, not by the works of uprightness, which we have done, but according to his compassion, through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Spirit. Here we are again. This is what Yahshua is going to do. This is the kind of immersion that Yahshua is bringing. A mikvah of the spirit. But but how important to a believer is immersion? You know, being mikvah for the remission of sin and the identification of Yahshua. Because, you know, when you go under that water, it's almost as if you are in, in the earth, going under the earth like he did in the tomb. And then when you rise up from up under that water, it's almost like when he rose up from the tomb. Yahshua in John chapter 3, starting at verse 3. Through the verse 5, he says, Truly, truly, I say unto you, unless one is begotten from above, he is unable to see the reign of Yahuwah. And Nicodemus said to him, this is, Nicodemus is one of these teachers in Israel who even then, as the teacher, didn't understand these, these lessons. And, you know, Yahshua scored at him. You know, Nicodemus said to Yahshua, How is a man able to be begotten when he is old? Is he is able to enter into his mother's womb a second time and be born? Yahshua would answer him, and saying in verse 5, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is begotten of water and spirit, he is unable to enter into the kingdom of Yahuwah. Oh, there it is. When you hear the word begotten, just think of being reborn or replace that word with reborn. So let's say you as a listener right now have said, I wanted to come out of Babylon. I want to come out of confusion, spiritual, mental confusion, maybe even physical confusion. And I want to shake that off and cross over like my forefather Abraham did. Because it's through Abraham that these blessings came through. Yahshua included, right? So let's say you have sworn off 
all of the pagan occultic practices that we took place in, that maybe your relatives still do, let's say you see the honor and the beauty in obedience. Because obedience is the highest form of worship, more than sacrifice we're told in scripture. Imagine that. Because I, I was brought up to believe in church that the law was done away with. So if the law is done away with, what are we obeying? What did Yahshua obey? If you have sworn off all sin and make no mistake about it, according to John, sin is the breaking of the law, which lets us know that the law is still in place because we're still out here sinning. Where there is no law, there is no sin. But let's say that you have sworn to a, a life of obedience. And, I, and I'm not saying that you're going to be perfect because you have an intercessor. If and when you do fall, his name is Yahshua HaMashiach. But grace, and that's the grace. Grace does not give us a window to lead a lawless lifestyle. Because then you take the risk of Yahshua saying, Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness, I never knew you. But you get to that point where you're ready to do all of that. These are some of the things you can start checking off in your head to know if you are truly ready for the mikvah or the immersion for the remission of sins and the identification of Yahshua HaMashiach. Mark chapter 1 verse uh, 4 it says, John came immersing in the desert and proclaiming the immersion of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. So again, if you need to see it in scripture, it's there. That's the mikvah that he had. You know, here's the thing. It, it, by the time you get dunked in the water, any kind of water, by that time, you should have already had the mikvah of the spirit or the heart, the circumcision of heart, rather, to already want to do these things. Because, see, let me tell you something. What's taking place is an outward manifestation of an inward thing. That should have taken place in the beginning. See, I was always thought to believe that once you got dunked in the water, you came up and then you, you somehow were supernaturally empowered with the ability to become somebody anew. But according to scripture, it doesn't work like that. You're supposed to have already been leading yourself up in the direction. And by the time you go in that water and come out, you have already really been a changed person. This is the ceiling of that. You got a lot of devils who, who may find themselves being baptized. You know, people who just do a lot of bad things, you know what I mean? And they, 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 lead, they come in as a dry devil, go up under the water, get baptized, and come up as a wet devil. Nothing much has changed, though. Because what does it profit you to have the outward uniform on, but you did not have the circumcision of heart? And this was Israel's problem. We looked apart. The Pharisees, they looked apart. But Yahshua told them inwardly, they are a dead man's tomb. We don't want that to apply to us any longer, which is why I'm telling you, you have to ask yourself, are you willing to give up bang, bang, bang? Are you willing to walk with him no matter what it costs? Are you willing to keep his commandments? Do you accept this Mashiach? Do you believe that he died for the remission of your sins? And are you willing to identify with him? Because, see, when you identify with him, then you are called by his name. And Yahshua says, you shall be hated and persecuted for what? My name. Are you ready for that? Just going under the water doesn't make you prepare for it when you come out. You have already would have had to ask yourself these things leading up to that pool, leading up to that water. Because once you get it, once you come from up under that water, you gang gang now. How we see it in the street. You gang gang. The enemy can clearly look at you and see now you wear the official uniform. You're no longer in the training uniform. You're no longer in the temp um, services uniform. You are a full employee with all the benefits that come from being a full employee. And you know what that does? It makes you a target, a big target. And knowing that now you understand the importance of putting on the armor of Yah. Only members put on armor of that particular army. You have to be a soldier in that army before you can put on the, the armor to prepare for battle. Because now you are a visible target and you must now don on these ordainments, these, these armaments that are given by the spirit for your enemy. Because we war not against flesh and blood. I always tell people not to scare them away from the identification of Yahshua HaMashiach. It ain't to scare you, it's to prepare you. You make yourself a target. The enemy wasn't sure what side you played on <laughs> when you come up and them heavens rejoice, them angels, they sing because the kingdom has now fully gotten uh, a, a new potential soul. Do you think that the angels are the only ones that are partaking in something like that? The demons can also hear. When Yahshua got immersed and when he came up, what happened? The, the heavens opened up and a voice rang down and said, this is my son in whom I delight. 
The spirit descended upon him like that of a dove we read. And then immediately after he was immersed, he was sent into the desert or he was led into the desert to be what? Tempted. Because the demons had got back to Lucifer and said, hey, I th we heard some commotion from these angels and we, we, we heard this voice come down from heaven. And I think we may have found the one you've been trying to kill since Genesis. And the devil had to go inquire about it. So understand that so goes the head, so goes the body. If this is what happened in Yahshua and you are now professing him to be your head or you are following a man who professes that this to be his head and these are the steps that you are aligning yourself into, what makes you any different? Yahshua says if they do this to the master, what do you think they're going to do to the servant? Again, these are things you must ask yourself. To me, I can only compare it to when, again, I wanted to become, you know, a part of the gang. I knew it came with that. I knew, you know, there's a difference between me just hanging around them, being an associate, being an affiliate, to me being an actual member. One, the members themselves treated me differently. They expected me to hold my own weight now, right? Two, the opposition wasn't going to cut me in the slack. If they caught me slipping, they weren't going to say, oh, he's just an affiliate or he's just curious about that other gang that we don't like. No, they were going to deal with me as such. And I had to be ready at my young age for that. It's no different than when you join in the identification of Yahshua HaMashiach. It's one of the mikvahs we see that come with persecution, which lead us into the mikvah of suffering, which I'm going to get into in a little bit. And once we are mikvah, know that it says in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10, For we all have to appear before the judgment seat of Mashiach in order for each one to receive to what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. You will be judged according now because you are on a squad. You are on the team and there's there's rules of engagement now that you are considering truly becoming gang gang. We got bylaws. We got institutions. We got ordinances that must be kept. And we don't care about how it makes you personally feel or whether it personally lined up with your doctrines or your ideologies. We don't care about your mind. We care about the body leading to the head. And if you can't get with that, immersion may not be for you. This may not be the gang for you. But if you are looking for renewal, then, then yes, you've come to the right place. Because we read in the same chapter in verse 17, it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Mashiach, he is a renewed creature. The old things have passed away. See, all things have become renewed. That would include your mind too, by the way. Colossians 2.12 says, Having been buried with him in immersion, in which you were also raised with him through the belief in the working of Yahuwah who raised him from the dead. This is the immersion of identification I'm telling you about. There was only one man who got buried, like Yahshua, his name was Yahshua. Therefore, when you take your immersion or your mikvah of identification, you are likening yourself unto him. This is tying you to him. And here I'm going to conclude on part two on what is a mikvah. Thank you all for listening.